Hello everyone, welcome back to a new session on Pila Globosa. In this presentation, we'll be looking into in detail the mantle and the mantle complex. Okay. Uh, as already mentioned, the body of Pila, it is divided into three, that is the head. Uh, you can see the uh, head region, the foot, it is ventral part and the major part forming the visceral mass, right? The skin of the visceral mass, uh, it forms a thin, delicate covering and that is what is referred as a mantle. So mantle is actually a loose fold of skin which covers the visceral mass and it is a very characteristic feature of uh, a molluscan uh, body. Uh, anteriorly, uh, this is what we see here in this particular uh, plate, the picture, it is the anterior part. The posterior part is on the opposite side, okay, because mouth is visible over here, isn't it? So, this is the anterior part, okay. The anterior part, um, anteriorly, the mantle becomes thickened and uh, um, what do you call pigmented and it functions as a protective hood-like structure uh, protecting the head and the appendages when these are retracted into the mantle cat so what happens is uh, usually the head and foot it, it is projected uh, when it is moving otherwise it, it is retracted into the shell right so when it is retracted it is retracted into a hood like structure uh, which is formed of the thickening of the mantle okay um, uh, similarly, we can see another structure. It is uh, the uh, known as a groove, the supramarginal groove. Uh, it is long, narrow groove that runs along the thickened free edge of the mantle. Okay, uh, anteriorly, and this is known as a supramarginal groove. And supramarginal groove is responsible for the uh, what you call secretion of periostracum of the shell. As we have already seen, the shell is composed of outermost layer, the periostracum, then the middle layer, the ostracum, and the innermost layer closer to the mantle, that is a hypostracum. Okay, now the uh, supramarginal groove it is responsible for the secretion of periostracum. And behind the peri peri uh, these um, supramarginal groove is a uh, glands um, which secrete the shell, shell secreting glands. Okay, so these shell secreting glands, they are responsible for the secretion of ostracum. I hope it is clear. That is periostracum, it is secreted by the supramarginal groove, while the shell secreting glands located very close to the groove, it is responsible for the secretion of ostracum. While the innermost layer, that is the hypostracum, it is secreted by the epithelial lining of the mantle. Okay. Now, on the on either sides of the uh, what you call um, uh, lateral sides of the head, uh, over the foot, you can see here there are um, structures which are referred as a pseudepipodium. Right. Uh, uh, the mantle is actually prolonged into a highly contractile and fleshy processes, which is referred as a pseudepipodium or the nuchal lobes. Okay. Uh, this we have mentioned in, the, uh, in one of the previous presentations. So the left and the right nuchal lobe or the pseudepipodia. The left one, you, as you can see, it is larger than the, uh, or, uh, sorry, longer than the, uh, the right nuchal lobe. And um, when the Pila, it is on land, it is when uh, the left nuchal lobe, it rolls out to form a tube-like structure and then we refer it as a respiratory siphon through which the mantle cavity, it communicates with the, what you call uh, the uh, external environment. So these epipodia, the left and right epipodia, they are just extensions of the mantle. Okay, uh, so what you see over here, it will be the mantle cavity. Okay, these are the, these, it is the mantle cavity. I hope it is clear. Okay, this is the part of the mantle cavity here and this one is also the ma mantle cavity. Now, this mantle cavity, okay, the space inside, okay, the mantle, it, it encloses a large cavity, uh, which is dosolateral in position. This is the dosal side, right, and the lateral side. So, dosolateral position and this is what is referred as the mantle cavity. Okay, so mantle enclosing a cavity inside right and uh, you, the head and the what you call uh, the foot it is retracted into this cavity uh, um, when uh, like uh, for protection and when it is resting the head is retracted first into the mantle cavity followed by the uh, foot region okay now on the floor of the cavity you can see and uh, there is a structure a ridge like structure you can see here this one 
and uh, it arises from the anterior edge of the right nuchal loop this is the right nuchal loop anterior edge of the right nuchal loop uh, these uh, uh, the ridge uh, arises and it uh, runs you can see here uh, extends up to the extreme posterior end of the uh, mantle cavity okay and this structure is known as the epitenia and what is the function of epitenia epitenia it divides the complete mantle cavity into two chambers so it is like a wall right and this divides the mantle cavity into two chambers this larger part it is the left part the larger part is known as the pulmonary chamber and the uh, smaller uh, the right part it is known as the branchial chamber okay so epitenia it is a ridge like structure uh, extending from the anterior uh, uh, like uh, edge of the right nuchal lobe extending till the posterior <coughs> sorry <coughs> extreme posterior end of the cavity and it divides the whole mantle cavity into two um, unequal uh, chambers the larger one on the left it is known as the pulmonary chamber and the smaller one on the right it is known as the the uh, what you call the branchial chamber okay so here it is marked one the branchial chamber and two it is the pulmonary chamber okay now uh, there are plenty of structures like many very important structures or organs uh, found associated with the uh, pulmonary chamber and the branchial chamber that is a mantle cavity in short so those organs uh, are associated with the mantle cavity it is together known as the mantle complex or the pallial complex since mantle is otherwise known as pallium the complex mantle complex is otherwise known as the pallial complex okay so all the organs associated with the mantle cavity the, this together is referred as the mantle complex or the pallial complex okay now we can see what are the organs present in each of the chambers first one we can see the branchial chamber okay uh, the organs in the branchial chamber they are tenedium um, rectum the genital duct the opening of the genital duct then hypobranchial gland and the renal duct and its opening okay we can see each one so as already mentioned this uh, on the right side of the epitenia you can see the uh, branchial chamber and this is what is the epitenia or it is the so what you, sorry sorry the tenedia or tenedium or the gill okay the tenedium or the gill you can see here it is uh, what you call it lies at the extreme right side of the mantle cavity extreme right side of the uh, branchial cavity and it hangs vertically downward from, from its dorsolateral wall so this is the dorsal wall and this is the lateral wall from the dorsolateral wall the epi uh, the tenedia it freely hangs down vertically into the branchial chamber and the uh, tenedium present in the pila it is monopectinate in nature that is comb like you can see over here it is comb like in nature and each of these uh, partition it is known as a gill filament or lamellae and they are somewhat uh, triangular in shape okay and they hang freely into the the branchial chamber okay the next one we have is, we can see is the rectum over here this is a terminal part of the uh, alimentary canal okay and it uh, the rectum as you can see it lies left uh, on the left side of the uh, tenedium so the rectum it lies to the left side of the tenedium uh, on the floor of the branchial chamber okay uh, so the path which is uh, if you take if you look into in in a 3d view if you take it in a 3d view the path which is closer to us is the uh, what you call uh, roof of the mantle cavity while the path away from the uh, from us it is the floor okay so so this is actually the uh, roof cut open okay and this will be the floor fine i hope it is clear so this uh, rectum it is placed on the floor of the branchial chamber and it is a raised tube like organ which extends from the extreme posterior end uh, of the mantle cavity and it uh, extends and it ends uh, a little behind the right nuchal lobe so this is the right nuchal lobe and you can see here this is where it ends okay it opens out through the anus the external opening the anus opens into the uh, what you call the branchial cavity very close to the right nuchal lobe okay and uh, the next one we have is the genital opening or the genital duct so this it is a female individual so here you have the genital duct the vagina 
right and uh, the male or the female genital duct it lies very close to the rectum here on the left side and uh, you can see it uh, opens out uh, again just like the what you call the rectum it opens into the branchial cavity very close to the right nuchal lobe okay in the case of uh, males uh, the penis which is the, the copulatory organ it arises from the mantle edge in front of the genital opening this is the genital opening over here and uh, uh, like uh, in front of the genital opening arises the copulatory organ penis in the case of males so this is a female individual dissected open so here you can see the vagina which opens at, close to the uh, rectal opening the anal opening okay now the next structure which you can see in the branchial chamber it is the hypobranchial gland and it is a uh, glandular thickening at the base of the penis so it's somewhat over here it will be found and it is responsible for secreting uh, uh, what you call uh, the secretions it helps in the during the act of copulation okay now the next one we have is the renal duct and the renal opening the anterior part of the chamber uh, of the renal or uh, anterior uh, chamber of the renal organ it projects into the branchial chamber okay near the posterior termination of the epitenia okay so here it will be seen somewhere very close to this part we can see the renal uh, opening uh, the opening of the renal organ and uh, its exterior or external opening is like a uh, oblique slit situated in a very shallow depression so these are the structures which are found associated with the uh, branchial chamber now we can go to the uh, uh, the two organs associated uh, with the pulmonary chamber the first and the largest one is the pulmonary sac and this is the pulmonary sac pulmonary sac it is a bag like organ uh, which hangs down uh, from the roof of the mantle cavity I, as i told you this is the roof actually okay so it, it will be sorry uh, it will be just like uh, it, it is like a like a book kept open right so it is uh, when it is um, uh, it is lifted up to show the structures inside right so this is the uh, roof of the mantle cavity and this bag like structure it hangs down from the roof of the mantle cavity and the the pulmonary sac it is a larger it occupies a larger area of the pulmonary chamber okay and you can see here the the uh, pulmonary chamber the pulmonary sac it uh, communicates with the pulmonary chamber by way of an opening and this opening is otherwise known as pneumostome or the uh, upper, the pulmonary aperture right and uh, it is uh, associate um, obviously pulmonary sac it is otherwise known as lungs because it is associated with uh, aerial respiration that is when the animal is on land uh, it takes up the pulmonary respiration and uh, the at that time the left nuchal lobe it acts as a respiratory siphon sucking in air and giving out air right and during this gaseous exchange takes place with the help of the pulmonary sac when it is in water what happens the water enters uh, the branchial chamber and uh, the, um, the gills or the tenedium it helps in the gill respiration so it happens okay now coming to the last uh, organ present in the uh, parallel complex it is the ostradium and here you can see the ostradium yes uh, arising from the mantle adjacent to the left nuchal lobe you can see the uh, ostradium and uh, it is almost like a leaf like structure right uh, and this is actually bipectinate I already mentioned the tenedium is monopectinate it is comb-like but here it is bipectinate on either side you can see structures ar arising so bipectinate it is almost like a feather okay and this uh, ostradium it consists of 22 to 28 uh, fleshy triangular leaflets okay so these are the leaflets you can see central line and then on either side you can see the lines drawn right these lateral structures are the uh, what you call the leaflets okay almost 22 to 28 leaflets may be found on either side of the ostradium okay in the ostradium and what is the function ostradium is a sensory structure chemoreceptor okay specifically what it does is it uh, actually um, checks the physical and chemical qualities of the water entering into the uh, mantle cavity okay and it also helps in uh, selecting the food which enters along with the water so that uh, ostradium it helps in 
checking the quality of water as already mentioned the paella it prefers fr fresh water or cleaner water right so how it actually uh, checks it it is with the help of the osphradium so these structures together it form the pallial complex okay so repeating the mant there is mantle cavity uh, and the mantle cavity it is divided into two branchial chamber and the pulmonary chamber by way of a epithelia a ridge okay and these are the organs associated with the mantle cavity